All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. We'll start the presentation now. So today we're going to talk about basic income, who pays, and work that EBI Works has done to answer a very important question, which is probably the number one question is, basic income should not raise my taxes. This is one of the number one issues we get. So we want to solve that. And today we're going to talk about our uh, the content we put together, the research effort, uh, to provide that an answer to that question. Uh, so uh, some of you are new, you may not know who we are. So we are a national nonprofit uh, that promotes basic income in Canada. We run the largest um, digital activism uh, community uh, with over uh, 5,000, over 60,000 people on our email list, 30,000 Facebook followers. Every month we put out petitions that email your MP. Um, and we, we, are, we, we are a marketing machine that wants to make sure basic income happens uh, in this country. And uh, I am uh, myself a business owner. Uh, EBA Works is funded primarily through small donations as well as the proceeds uh, from my business because I really want to see Canada have a basic income so we can eliminate poverty and create a country where people can pursue their potential uh, and, and be able to take risks and improve their lot in lives. And a basic income is crucial for that, crucial for how the economy is changing um, to maintain pathways into the middle class and create a, a decent society that we all know we want to live in. So how does UBI Works uh, do what it does? Well, we mentioned we all have digital activism. We also organize marches and rallies. We'll, there'll be one soon again in Toronto. You'll be hearing from us if you're on our list. Uh, we organize, um, uh, help. we help you to rally and organize around petitions such as the latest bills in Parliament, uh, 223, and, and, and last government, we promoted uh, both those bills as well. Um, uh, we organized research, uh, research, for instance, that showed that uh, basic income would grow the economy and create jobs, which politicians need to hear, and we're going to beat them over the heads with it, so they, they know this. Um, and so, yeah, we do whatever we can to keep raising, um, uh, making noise about basic income, and ensure that it becomes an election issue. So it brings us to what we're doing here. This is I'm presenting uh, the latest research effort we put we put together that answers the question: Who pays for a basic income? Um, now, very importantly, what we're presenting here is a funding plan uh, for a basic income that that is intended to not cost the vast majority of working uh, Canadians. Uh, so this is not about uh, any specific design of a basic income. Uh, we're not necessarily promoting uh, the design that we have here, which is based on the Ontario pilot. What we're wanting to show is that for this basic income, uh, that there is a way to pay for it that doesn't cost the majority of working Canadians because this is the number one objection that people have. Uh, th this is very important. Um, uh, so since we put out this article actually a week ago, uh, it's been doing quite well. Uh, we've had uh, retweets from senators, uh, members from uh, four different political parties. And uh, so we hope that as we continue to promote this, that the political establishment, the political class in this country uh, knows, remembers this plan, because we hope, frankly, that one of the parties will be inspired by parts of it at least, and maybe incorporate it into uh, their, uh, uh, their election platforms, uh, into their lobbying work, uh, and perhaps even, who knows, there could be a deal sometime even in this government. So it's very important that we also chose uh, a plan that could, could possibly win in an election. Because we know uh, the fundamental problem that we're faced with with getting a basic income in any country, including in Canada, is that you know, for, uh, while most Canadians would want Canada to have a basic income, uh, the majority don't want their taxes to go up in order to have one. And here on the right, you can see some tweets by um, hardworking Canadians who are uh, can't imagine how they could pay more in tax. You know, right now, even even the middle class is struggling. Everyone's struggling in, in this economy with inflation going up. So. We need to answer the question, how do we pay for it in a way that doesn't offend the sensibilities of the majority of voters uh, if this has a chance uh, of happening? Um, and so the, the plan that we initially started around was a, a guaranteed basic income of approximately 18,300 for individuals and 25,900 for couples. Now, importantly, this is not the plan that EBI Works endorses. Uh, we only started with this plan uh, because it's the one that's most frequently talked about in Parliament. Um, the Parliamentary Budget Office costed this plan uh, to a, a gross cost of uh, a net cost of 51 billion from a gross cost of 85 billion. Um, this is the one that uh, uh, parliamentarians are often talking about. So if they're talking about this one, this one is also based on the Ontario basic income pilot, the one that actually happened here. So we wanted to show a way to pay for this one that uh, is being used frequently and, and debated in government, 
uh, although obviously we would want to see a more generous plan, just like all of you uh, would want that as well. In fact, we had already uh, a year and a half ago published an article uh, about uh, published content about recovery UBI. We had a whole campaign about a $2,000 a month um, guaranteed minimum income built on top of a $500 a month a dividend to all Canadians, uh, which was a, a much bigger plan. It would have cost four times more. Um, so, but this plan, like this costing that we're putting forth here is intended to be um, a realistic starting point for the discussion to show that we don't have to tax uh, working Canadians to pay for a basic income. So as I mentioned, uh, that basic income has a net cost of $51 billion uh, after the Parliamentary Budget Office identified $30 billion of potential offsets from cash transfer programs that would reach the same population. Uh, so uh, this, so that would reduce the net cost of $51 billion um, a dollar, a dollar for dollar. So the question is, well, how do we raise $51 billion in a way that is, um, has any chance to win in an election? So that we can, and, and so that we can answer this question, who should pay for a basic income? So this is a, an important issue because, frankly, other costings for a basic income in Canada would actually raise taxes on on working middle class Canadians. So what I'm showing you here is parts of the article, but laid out as a presentation, uh, just for readability. Uh, but the uh, the PBO um, did put out a um, uh, did present a, a paper showing that you could actually. Uh, finance a bit, this basic income in a revenue neutral manner um, by not actually increasing the income tax rates, but by removing tax credits. So if you removed a whole bunch of tax credits that add some complexity to the, to the system, uh, that would actually pay for basic income. But the problem with, with removing all these tax credits is that, that in the end, it still causes Canadians to pay more in income tax, including low income Canadians uh, who would have higher tax rates. So you know, we don't think that that approach is politically feasible, even if it sounds interesting to say that basic income could be revenue neutral to the government, it's still raising income taxes. Uh, another popular uh, rule of thumb we've seen is that you could, uh, to raise $51 billion, you just have to raise the, the GST by 5%, which wouldn't be far off. Um, it wouldn't be unreasonable, for instance, if you raise the GST, the federal GST by 5%, then Canada's overall HST across the country would be, would be varied, but it would be consistent with what it is in Europe. So the consumption taxes in Canada would be, um, uh, currently are much lower than they are in Europe. And, uh, and many economists favor raising the GST because they see it as a non-distortionary um, tax that would not change behavior too much. But if you do that, well, how could we do that now in the time of soaring costs and high inflation? Like I, I just, you can decide for yourself if you think that's politically feasible for a party to, to run on raising the GST. Um, and of course, many other plans talk about raising uh, income taxes. For instance, um, uh, there's a, a plan from another basic income advocacy organization uh, that would uh, cause taxes to go up for people who make $61,000 or higher, um, who, uh, you know, who are already st struggling right now. And that's uh, not a lot of money when uh, the cost of living is going up. So, you know, it's unlikely that they would vote for a basic income. So we need a plan that would survive an election, we could actually win an election that would appeal to uh, people's sensibilities, sense of fairness and justice, um, and would not harm economic growth. So we put ourselves through three key criteria for the specific tax plans uh, that we proposed here. And um, the first one is that it, it doesn't materially impact individuals earning less than 100,000 a year, which is 91% of tax filers. Uh, so looking across all the uh, tax plans that, that we have, all the ideas in the article that add up to 51 billion, um, you know, it would be difficult to prove that they would, those would raise taxes on people who make under 100,000 a year. Um, so we fall primarily on the top uh, on, um, well, I'll show you in a moment, but, and also in some, in many cases, it wouldn't even fall on people who earn less than 150,000 a year, uh, which is 97% of tax filers. Um, uh, these, the tax plans that we put together uh, also, key criteria is that it does not discourage entrepreneurship or private capital investment. And why? Because anytime a party runs on or makes a big proposal for a certain tax, you see a lot of opinion papers in the Financial Post and the National Post in, in Bloomberg that are, will criticize it for harming economic growth. And um, we're, we live in a climate where every political party has to prove that their ideas will grow the economy. Um, whether you agree with that or not is, is, is not, not the issue. The issue is we, we have to find a plan that at least will not trigger a lot of opposition. 
uh, a mainstream opposition to basic income because we want basic income now and we don't want to get mired in politics or mired in um, uh, specific tax policies that already have strong ideological leanings that that could 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 uh, sway voters to oppose it for instance uh, so so not triggering uh, opposition on the economic growth front is really important because frankly we know that basic income would grow the economy like we, we actually showed uh, research uh, a year and a half ago, you can go to ubiworks.ca slash grow economy and see a, see a report that shows that it would create uh, 600,000 jobs long term and add 80 billion to GST. But that depends on how it's funded. So it really depends on the specific uh, types of taxes that pay for it. And finally, that the ideas are feasible, that they work within our existing tax code, they have strong international precedence. So we're not proposing um, any ideas that that, that are um, are not credible or haven't been tried anywhere. So that's the criteria that we put forth to ourselves. And we did, we'd actually found that, yes, there is such a plan. And so we want to go out and say, and hopefully you as advocates can go out and say, whether it's over, over the dinner table, or if you're talking to people or lobbying an MP, or if you're, uh, thank you for those of you who are also helping us on our various social media channels to answer uh, questions or people who are opposed, you can now answer the question, hey, my taxes shouldn't go up to pay for basic income or who pays for it? You can say, well, your taxes probably won't go up. Here's a plan that shows you that your taxes won't go up and we can end, we can reduce poverty in this country. So we can fund a basic income without taxing most Canadians or, or discouraging uh, economic growth. Uh, so our plan um, at a high level, uh, it, uh, it funds raises $51 billion from contributions from the financial sector uh, reducing tax breaks uh, for large corporations and reducing subsidies used by the, the wealthiest Canadians. Uh, and these all add up to $51 billion. And so, and I also feel that these ideas are, uh, they tend to pull well with Canadians and appeal to people's sense of fairness. Uh, now, $51 billion, or um, I mentioned the gross cost of this guaranteed basic income is $85 billion. Um, the cost is probably far less than 51 billion uh, because uh, it's been estimated that the cost of poverty itself in this country is 80 billion dollars and you can find those references in the article so if the cost if poverty actually costs us whether it's through uh, people having um, poor health and having to go to hospitals more or people having to resort to 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 crime or people getting sick uh, or the impacts of stress or the impacts on the economy of people not being able to uh, escape exploitive situations. Um, if that costs us 80 billion, then doesn't that already have the answer? Like that's how you pay for it. Just implement it and you'll save money by, by, by reducing uh, uh, these costs on society. Unfortunately, governments can't really um, estimate funding for programs that way because these are all downstream costs. So for instance, um, if less people, um, uh, if less people go to the hospital, that is not an upfront cost that can be used to fund a basic income, but that is a cost savings that would be returned uh, back to the provinces or back to the municipalities, um, and, but, but not something the federal government could recover. So we still have to show um, the raising of new tax revenues. And, and also based on, on the research, um, basic income would grow the economy. So it would cause, could create $10 billion of additional revenues to the government uh, because of economic growth, because when you have more money in your pocket to spend that trickles up in the economy causes more spending causes more hiring of jobs and i mentioned earlier that that research that shows that we could create uh, 600,000 jobs uh, if we implement a basic income because of the additional demand stimulation that would have on the economy um, but that also needs needs further study so uh, we're not sure that a politician could actually say uh, uh, include that up front in how to pay for basic income but it would be a tax savings and some of that 10 billion also would not go to the federal government uh, it would be increased spending that drives revenues for the provinces um, and, and so on. Uh, but a basic income would grow the economy by more than it costs. And, and the net cost would probably be a lot less than 51 billion. But we wanted to be very conservative and, and just show a complete tax raise um, from these various ideas that we're presenting. Um, so in conclusion, you know, we feel that we can, anyone can legitimately say, if your money comes from a paycheck, you likely won't pay for it. And in our article, uh, we show all these various funding uh, ideas that were researched by economists, uh, Vivek Research. We actually worked directly with them and, and funded that research. Canadians for Tax Fairness, they do great work as well. We borrowed a lot from some of their ideas and we put these ideas together. 
um, uh, of tax reforms that again have precedents. They exist either in, uh, around the world or would be a, a minor change to the existing tax code. So these are credible ideas that also reflect a, a centrist, um, a centrist narrative. They're not overly left-wing or right-wing. These are ideas that we think most Canadians in the center could, could vote on and see a sense of fairness on because again, we see basic income as an election issue. So these ideas have to fit within the, the, uh, the lens of, of winning in an election. Um, <clears throat> so that is the, um, yeah, so these are some of the ideas I mentioned. Uh, now, this, if I go into the actual article and show all those ideas, this will become a, uh, a presentation on tax policy. I'm not sure everyone here is interested in that, um, but we can. So after the talk, uh, you can post questions in the Q&A about specific ideas that we had uh, in the article about how to pay for basic income. And uh, I will go over uh, why we chose any ideas for whoever uh, wants to ask a question about a specific uh, tax idea. Um, so we've now launched and we're now promoting this, this social media. You can help us if you want to help promote us. You can go to ubiworks.ca slash how to pay dash activism. And you can find the various uh, social media um, uh, posts that we've created and you can reshare them yourself. Um, if you're on our, our email list, you, you would have gotten a link to a petition. So you can make sure your member of parliament uh, knows about this work uh, so they can share it. You know, the more people who know about it, the more that the parties will be aware uh, that this that this is a way that we can pay for a basic income. So these are just some some more of the work that we've done, and um, yeah. So please, uh, you can email and uh, uh, tweet your MP uh, and spread this work across um, uh, through your through your networks. Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you very much. So at this point, you can post your questions, and I will answer them to, to the best of my ability. Um, and thank you very much for coming. Awesome. Thanks, Floyd. Um, we have had Liam and Ken in there answering a lot of questions. I do see we have some people watching on Facebook as well. Um, if you are on Facebook, you can write a comment and I can also um, bring those questions over too. Um, but if you do have a question, again, please make sure that you put it in the Q&A. And if Liam and Ken don't answer it, I will make sure to, to send them to Floyd. Must have been a very succinct uh, presentation if we don't have that many that are unanswered right now. So, oh, Catherine, awesome. Do you mind typing your question into the QA? I see that you have your hand up. There's a QA button just at the bottom of the screen there um, that you can ask your questions in. All right. So, Catherine's wondering uh, where is this working? Um, I think she means like, where is a basic income? Where has it been tried or, or is there an existing basic income? Um, great question. So Canada actually has one of the largest basic incomes already. It's called the Canada Child Benefit. So the CCB is a basic income for people who have, have kids. It's, a, it's unconditional except on having kids and having uh, what your level of income is. So it's very interesting that over, um, if I recall the, the numbers, uh, there are over, um, I think, 300,000 uh, families receiving more than $1,000 a month right now, and over a million families receiving more than $500 a month. Uh, so that's probably the, around the world, one of the largest examples um, of an actual cash transfer program uh, working. And, and we know that it has not reduced um, uh, work. Actually, uh, employment has grown since the, the, previous, uh, the, the previous government increased it in 2015. Um, and it has actually improved the economic growth as well. We saw the governor of the Bank of Canada, Stephen Pelos at the time, uh, cite um, this program as to why Canada led the G7 in GDP growth uh, in 2017. Um, so this is, I think it's, it's working. And also looking at old age security, OES, GIS, uh, Canada pension plan, those are basic incomes for seniors. Um, and they work, they do what, they, what they're intended to, they keep people out of poverty. Um, so we have in this country a basic income for, uh, for children and for seniors, and we just don't have it for working age Canadians, uh, many of who are falling through the cracks and are not covered through EI or, the, or people in the gig economy or people who are underemployed and, and on our low incomes and the basic income would, would help them. Um, in addition, this seems to be the year of pilots. There are pilots 
all over the place now. Um, there, there's probably a dozen in the U.S. Much smaller uh, amounts, though, um, benefit amounts. Usually it's 500 bucks, like something small like that per month. Uh, but we have, in the last 50 years, we've had um, over 50 pilots around the world um, uh, for real basic incomes, like the one in Manitoba in the 70s, uh, that had all, all positive results. Um, and so we think that it's, it's not time for pilots anymore. It's time to actually have a, a basic income. Oh, perfect. Um, I see Liam's answering this one, but I'm going to bring this one up anyway. Um, Sandra wants to know, has the concept been championed by any of the Canadian political parties thus far? Um, great question. So currently uh, at eBay Works uh, website, we have a, um, I believe it's a push your parties uh, link in the, in the top menu bar. And we have a summary of where each party stands. Uh, so at the moment, uh, the Green Party has been for basic income for many years. Uh, it's their officially, they're for it. The Liberal Party in their platform conventions have consistently voted it up in the top three to five resolutions for the last several conventions. But that doesn't mean that the actual party, the actual government will run on it or do anything about it. But clearly the membership of Liberal Party is for it. Um, uh, and we've had a Liberal MP do a private member's motion uh, in a previous government um, that, uh, that unfortunately didn't survive the government. Uh, currently, uh, there is Bill C223 that has been, uh, it's a private member's motion, sorry, a private member's bill uh, by Leia Gazan, uh, who is uh, with the NDP, and also is a complimentary bill in the Senate, S223, uh, run by um, Honorable Senator Kim Pate. And um, so, that, so the NDP is, seems to be promoting it at least through these bills, although if you look at their platform page, basic income is the, um, was the last in the list of many things. Uh, so I'm not convinced it's their top priority. So at the moment, unfortunately, it's, it's only the Greens. However, uh, with our work and your work continuing to promote this, we have to make sure that the parties uh, believe that they can win uh, on basic income in an election. And again, that is the whole point of this work that we've done, is to show that basic income can win an election, that it can be done without costing the majority of, of working Canadians. Awesome. Um... I see that there's a couple questions that touch on the question of um, inflation in terms of a basic income, but I, um, that people are arguing that a basic income would need to keep up with inflation in order to be um, implemented. Is that a valid concern? Um, and is that something that we're concerned about? Absolutely. So basic income should keep up with inflation. Um, uh, the Canada Child Benefit uh, has been indexed to inflation, I believe. That was a previous um, uh, election promise. I, I, I think it's happened. So any cash transfer program obviously should keep up with inflation. And it's frankly a tragedy that existing social assistance uh, welfare programs have not kept up with inflation. And that's one of the reasons, again, why we need a basic income, uh, because if it's broad-based, if, if, if all the Canadians know that this is a security blanket that will help them in time of need, um, I think we will, there will be more political support to index it to inflation. So it certainly should be at least indexed inflation. Now, there's always a lot of concern about would basic income create its own inflation? And the answer is no, probably not. If you think about what do uh, people in experiencing poverty or low-income Canadians spend money on, like, uh, I don't think going to the grocery store instead of a food bank would drive inflation. Like, these are elastic uh, public goods. Uh, inflation is driven primarily through supply and demand and increasing demand for uh, basic goods uh, for, uh, for your basic needs uh, would not drive inflation. Uh, also, no one's proposing that basic income be created, be funded through printed money. And our, our plan on UBA, on, that we're presented here on ubiworks.ca slash how to pay is also none of those ideas are, are printing money. Those are all ideas of raising taxes, uh, primarily through contributions from the financial sector reducing subsidies for large corporations and subsidies used by the wealthiest Canadians. So these are actually raising uh, money from the, the primary drivers of extreme inequality in our, in our system uh, and, and using that to, to reduce poverty uh, and create more prosperity and more opportunity for uh, people uh, experiencing low incomes and, and poverty. And again, the things people spend money on are not inflation drivers at that level. Awesome. Um I have another question that's along the same lines about uh, rent increases, but I, I believe that that's on the same level as inflation that um, those absorbed rent increases would be part of if we could index it to inflation. Yeah. In fact, in, in Manitoba, I think there's something called Manitoba Rent Assist, 
which actually is a basic income that's called rent assist. So if you receive this money, it's unconditional because no one's asking you, how did you spend it? Like the program does not require uh, the money to go straight to your landlord. It goes to you uh, and then you can use it to pay rent or buy groceries, but it's called rent assist. So, so clearly we do need support for people, low income people, because rents, cost of rents are going up. Like it's insane what's happening with the housing market. Uh, basic income is obviously not a solution to that problem, uh, but it, it is a, um, a, a key, a key uh, first part of the solution to reduce the suffering for those who, who need the most assistance with rent. Um, uh, rent is a very complicated issue. As you know, many cities such as Toronto, uh, uh, where I live, have rent control, uh, but that, that doesn't go far enough. But that is beyond the scope of, of a conversation about basic income. Fair. Um, there is a question on Facebook from Laura um, from Basic Income Kamloops, I believe. Um, she wants to know, there was a great um, spreadsheet made a couple of years ago um, about which MPs were for a basic income. And she wanted to know if that had been updated. And I believe that was by Sam Beckmans. Um, so I'll, Laura, I can send that your way, but we don't have a spreadsheet internally right now with where people stand, but we do have the basic income pledge that we did um, over the federal election about where a lot of the candidates stood. Um, Gina's wondering, um, do we think that uh, Bill S233 would pass? Um, and if so, what would that mean in terms of a basic income? Um, I think these bills at the, at the moment are raising awareness for basic income, they're, they're, they're a way for the um, parties to have to establish a position. Um, uh, it, I personally think it's unlikely any, any bill, private member's bill would, would pass. It, it, it's important to know that a, a private member's bill is not a government bill. It, it's not a commitment from the government to actually implement it. And these bills are, are talking about creating a, a national strategy. So committing the government to study how they would do a basic income, how they cooperate between the federal government and the provinces. So if the bills did pass, and um, sorry, I, I think I, I misstated, I do think the bills can pass because the bills are calling for creating a strategy and, and creating the research that the parties would require uh, to pass a basic income uh, one day. It will help to create the political support for it. But, but none of the bills are actually calling for implementing a basic income now. Um, now, UBI Works is promoting them anyway because this is the most important thing happening in Parliament right now, and we need all the MPs from all the parties to get a lot of emails from, from yourselves signing our petitions um, to show that, that they want this. Because again, if, if the parties see that there's so much support for basic income that, um, that they, they will lose if they don't run on it in the next election, then, then I, I think this actually has a chance. So we are promoting the bills because the bills are the next step in the current life cycle of how politics works with, with big new ideas like this. Um, so yeah, I, sorry, I, I do think they can pass. And, um, but unfortunately, they're not actually calling to implement a basic income. They're calling to create a strategy for how uh, we would have a basic income. Um, and in some cases would even trigger another pilot. Awesome. I see that Ken and Liam are very busy answering some questions right now. So I'm just seeing if there's any that they want me to highlight. Um, um, Here's a fun one I want to answer from Jason Michelin. Have you considered okay. an automation tax for businesses to replace machines? Um, so, uh, so some of you who haven't seen the article, uh, I just want to point out again, um, we have a lot of tax ideas in here. So contributions from the financial sector um, that, are, that are happening in other co countries like in the UK and Hong Kong, these, these taxes work and, and I think are very uh, reasonable to ask the financial sector to contribute to reduce poverty. Uh, tax breaks, fewer tax breaks for large corporations. All these have been studied. All of these have, have been are coming from places like Canadians for Tax Fairness, and and studied from um, you know the Parliamentary Budget Office. So th these are all ideas that have precedent and are doable. Um, automation tax is a um, a wonderful idea. I'm a software engineer myself, but it, it's there are no real proposals for how to do that and. Um, uh, it's what is a robot? Is Microsoft Excel a robot? Is Google Spreadsheets a robot? Um, you know, spreadsheets have also caused millions of jobs to be lost in, in clerical. So um, uh, I think it's more important to look at these broad-based taxes that uh, recognize the uh, where the growth has gone from technology and automation that are as broad as possible, uh, so as to to capture the technological gains. Um, 
yeah, you know, in the way that that broadly works. So that's that's why we, we don't include anything anything like that in this particular uh, proposal. Awesome. Well, the all of the questions on Facebook look like they've been answered. I see there was another question about the if basic income had ever been tried without a pilot, but we did talk about the different um, pilots and stuff that has happened. Um, and yeah, it looks like Liam and Ken are answering the two questions that are left right now. Um, um, there's a lot of questions about is it universal or not? So again, the the plan that we showed in this article, it's only intended to prove that we can pay for a basic income that reduces poverty without taxing the vast majority of working Canadians, because that is the number one opposition to it. The, the plan that we show here is not, not our favorite plan. Uh, it's, it won't reduce poverty 100%. It is the one that the Parliamentary Budget Office and various MPs talk about, however, so we wanted to have an answer to that question. So, you know, we are UBI Works. Do we want a universal payment to everyone? Uh, of course. But, but um, it is not the most realistic beginning of a conversation for basic income in Canada. Um, we feel that just looking at what, what's actually happened in the last several years, uh, a guaranteed basic income has a much better chance of actually passing because its, it's gross cost is, its net cost is significantly less uh, at only 51 billion. And uh, that's why this particular uh, research that we've, we're putting out here is starting from, from there. Okay, terrific. Um, oh, this is an interesting question. Um, I see that some people are putting their questions in the chat. If you do have a question, please go ahead and put it in the, the Q&A. Um, but Saeed wants to know, um, is UBI, would it be done better at a provincial level or a federal level in Canada? And do you think it might vary between provinces and cities? Um, yeah, great question. So um, uh, it, I, I've asked this question a lot myself over the years. And sometimes depends who you ask. I one time had the opportunity to ask someone who's very high up in the government right now. And, and uh, they said that, well, the, uh, the provinces usually implement these big new ideas first and they prove it. For example, healthcare uh, that started in Saskatchewan and eventually moved everywhere. Um, uh, but then I talked to other people who are, have a provincial mandate, uh, provincial level, and they say, well, the federal government has to do it because they can raise the most money. They have most access to, to fundraising sources. So frankly, they're probably both true. Could a province uh, implement a basic income on its own? Sure, it could. I mean, it has the most to save in terms of cost savings on other social assistance programs. Um, uh, however, the federal government has access to a more diverse range of, of taxation options, uh, like many of the ones that are we've listed in, in, our, uh, in our plan here. Uh, so they, it can both be done. I can tell you what I like to see. I like to see the federal government implement a national basic income uh, that is is at a national level that reduces poverty, um, and and then all the provinces can rebuild their existing social assistance programs on top of it. Uh, so if people uh, in certain provinces need a bit more money because cost of living is higher, or if someone is is um, if you're a Canadian with disabilities and you obviously have additional uh, needs uh, than just the the national basic income would pay, uh, then those are all top ups on top of the basic income. So if we did this, you would have millions of Canadians who would no longer need to be in any social assistance program because their financial needs would be met. Uh, and those who need to remain on because they have additional needs um, or, or cost of living is higher, uh, there could be supplements at a provincial level. And this is consistent. For instance, there are in Quebec, there's additional uh, payments for child credit, even though there is a, a Canada child benefit federally. So it's, it's quite normal to, to have different amounts in different provinces. But that wouldn't have to be the uh, purview of a federal program. The provinces could simply uh, fund their own additional top-ups. Terrific. I see an interesting question here, Floyd. Um, uh, so Tom wants to know if um, entrepreneurs could pay for basic income where governments are unwilling to. Um, and I, I just thought that was a kind of interesting one because you are an entrepreneur as well. Um, so <laughs> I thought maybe you'd like that one. Um, yeah, well, I'm personally spending a lot of the proceeds from my business, which is a software education company, uh, to fund UBI Works to promote basic income in this country. Um, uh, I don't think you could add up enough volunteers to, I mean, if you look at the total spending and all donations in the country, uh, I'm not sure that even adds up to um, anything close to the cost of, of a national basic income. So uh, the answer is probably not, but I, I wish that would be possible. Right now in the US, there are a lot of basic income pilots being funded 
that are being funded by um, wealthy people. But I mean, all these pilots are small, like a thousand people here, a thousand people there. You, you simply cannot fund a, a, a national program just, just through charitable donations. Fantastic. And I'm just gonna check Facebook too and see if there's anything else um, coming up over there. It looks like Ken's answering questions on Facebook too. So um, yeah. All right, I'm just gonna give people a couple more minutes to type your questions into the Q&A section if you have some, uh, some additional questions there. Uh, there was a question about impact on availability of workers with the basic income, because we saw through CERB that there, there were some concerns that CERB caused uh, reduction in, in, in people working. Now, it's important to note that, the, that those reductions were most, mostly, um, there's a lot of certainly true stories of companies that couldn't get workers to go back during CERB, but the research has shown that there's a variety of reasons for that. Uh, people were afraid to go back to work, they had children at home they had to take care of who couldn't go to school. Uh, also, um, the pandemic lasted so long that a lot of people did, frankly, what a basic income would do is, is gave them a chance to, to reinvest, take a course, start a business, um, upgrade their, to a better, move to a better industry. Um, now that happened all at once and very fast. So I don't think that would happen over a long-term basic income. What we, what we do know with basic income is that there is no significant reduction in work. None of the pilots have shown that. The only constituents that slightly reduce their hours of work our mothers who stay a bit longer with their children and uh, uh, teenagers who stay longer in high school they, or complete their education. Uh, what we, we actually need now is an income support program that lets people go back to school because we, we are facing a industrial revolution. Uh, the job market is changing. Uh, we are seeing a reduction in middle income jobs. So it's very important that we have, pe we have a pathway into the middle class so that people can rely on, so they can take bigger, better risks, go back to school, start a business and that's what a basic income would do um, we have seen evidence that basic income actually will raise wages uh, because uh, workers can afford to uh, leave a exploitive job that doesn't pay well enough or negotiate better pay um, so what we're seeing is that for for low income jobs the issue is not availability of workers the issue is is businesses being willing to pay more uh, so if if basic income induces workers to pay more then everyone is better off Awesome. Um, I see Darcy has a question about what type of plans does UBI Works have in terms of gaining uh, national exposure for this proposal, like TV or radio, for those who aren't as social media savvy? I thought that was an interesting one. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, we're working on it. Um, uh, we're doing the best we can. We don't have specific plans other than continuing to promote this as widely as we can. And uh, we are reaching out to uh, mainstream media, hoping to get uh, uh, get get story and get visibility there. And of course, anything you can do to help. If, if uh, you have a reporter that you like, that you like to read or see their work, you can email them and tell them about this plan. I'll, I'll gladly appear on TV and talk about this plan. <laughs> uh, I think we need people to know about, about um, whether it's this plan or any other plan, the fact that basic income does not have to cost the, the vast majority of, of working Canadians and, um, and this can win in an election. Fantastic. Um, Sandra had a bit more of a personal question, Floyd. Um, what sparked your specific passion for a basic income or a UBI out of curiosity? Oh, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, I guess uh, very personally, I grew up in a house uh, with domestic violence. And if my mother had a basic income, it would have really changed the power dynamic. And um, a basic income, that's what it does. It's about freedom. And freedom means options, having the option to plan long term, to escape an exploitive environment, and a lot of people right now are stuck in um, very dangerous situations just because of money, uh, who, who cannot escape poverty. So we need to provide a way for people to have long-term income security. Um, and as myself, as a software engineer, um, you can see, I can see what's happening with the market. Like we can see that um, robots are taking our jobs and you know, they've been taking our jobs for decades. Uh, robots are not just walking machines on, with legs. Robots is software. It's it's, um, it's machine learning, it's process automation. And in, in my own life, I saw um, members of my family be displaced uh, when our manufacturing sector shrank in the early 2000s, uh, when there was a rapid influx of new automation so that businesses could compete with China. Uh, so we saw a huge reduction that was primarily due to automation, not due to China. Uh, so that's happening now and it's happening faster. And we're seeing now that um, the middle class 
is shrinking. And when you have a two-tiered society, that's bad for everyone. So I think we do need basic income and uh, the advances in automation is, is a big reason so that we can in some way share in the gains, especially for those who have the least and ensure that people have a means to uh, improve better themselves and train for the jobs of the future. It's, it's absolutely essential. Um, in a few years, um, Tesla will overnight trigger the, the availability of the Tesla fleet to become self-driving competitors to taxis and Uber. That'll put millions of people out of work, um, you know, just, just as an example, and it's gonna happen fast. So we need something in place uh, to, to survive these moments. You know, for instance, imagine if, imagine if we didn't have CERB, what would have happened here? Uh, if uh, the pandemic had happened and the government said, all right, everyone, well, uh, you can lose everything you've got, sell your house and go into poverty because then you guess what? Then you'll qualify for, for welfare programs. <laughs> well, that's insane. But that's basically the way we're running our society right now. Like you, you can't get income assistance unless you've, you're literally gone already into poverty. We need a basic income to solve that gap so people who are facing life transitions um, can get support now and go through that transition and come out of it better and not have to fall into poverty. Uh, in order to get any income support. Certainly. Um, Joel wants to know um, if you think that there's a chance that pilot programs might not fully represent how many people would continue to work if a basic income was implemented since the pilots are temporary um, and selected participants might be more likely to continue working to ensure they have, still have a job when the pilot ends. Now, I know there's the Alaska per, or Alaskan Permanent Fund, um, which is more of a dividend than a basic income, but that part-time employment has increased and, and full-time employment hasn't really decreased there. Um, but is there anything else um, of that that you'd like to touch on? Um, yeah, it, it's a fair question. There is a pilot happening. Uh, I believe it's in a, Namib Namibia right now where people are giving income security for 12 years. And I, I believe the early results of that pilot are all positive. Not, not In fact, um, I believe entrepreneurship is up like something like 200% or something because just people can plan long-term. Um, so the example in, in Alaska, which is, is real, is is obviously uh, um, is working. Uh, people, it's not a full basic income. It's a much smaller amount, uh, but it is improving. It is actually bringing more people into the workforce who can work part time, uh, and it hasn't reduced full time employment. Thanks, Chelsea, for mentioning that. Um, but I guess I would ask you, you know, what would you do if you had long term income security? And obviously, it's not enough for a luxurious life. It's enough to just to help in times of transition. Um, and you know, from what we're seeing from surveys, from uh, surveys of participants. Um, is that people who can make better long-term decisions generally invest more in themselves and want to improve their lot in life uh, and often will end up being getting higher paying jobs than they had before. Um, so uh, yeah, so the issues around the timing, uh, the shortness of these pilots, uh, it's a fair question. Um, and yeah, I, but I don't think in Canada, around the world, we've not seen any decrease in work from similar programs, like I mentioned, uh, the Canada Child Benefit which is like a basic income, has not, has not reduced employment. It's actually increased it. Fantastic. Um, so there's an anonymous attendee that wants to know, what can we do to help uh, get a basic income here sooner? So is there a way that they can support UBI Works? Um, is there a way that they can support um, kind of our mission to get a basic income here? Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. So that's what UBI Works exists to do every week. If you're on our list, we're sending you uh, at least once a month, we're sending you activist things that you can do, things you can do uh, with a few clicks. If you're um, calling your MP is a good idea. More importantly, uh, talking to your party. Uh, if you join your party and talk to them about why we need a basic income now, um, the, the parties have to do this. Um, you can obviously donate to UBI Works. Uh, we can use all the help we can get uh, as we continue promoting basic income in this country for the next few years. Um, and yeah, just keep putting pressure on, on the parties, on your MP and, uh, and keep participating in the various campaigns that we, we send your way. Oh, and, and come to our basic income March. When is it Chelsea? Uh, the next one is May 14th. I believe that's a Saturday. Let me double check that I'm on the right, the right month. Yeah, we haven't announced it yet, but we're organizing another March for basic income in Toronto and, uh, we'll be trying to help other organizations in other parts of the Canada to do it on the same day. Um, so we can continue keeping the pressure up. Yeah, it's uh, Saturday, have, May 14th. Yeah, Saturday, May 14th. Marches and, and rallies for basic income across the country. Uh, so you can join us there. 
and uh, and be seen. And we'll make sure that all the MPs know that this happened and the parties know that this happened, that people are willing to uh, to, to meet and rally in March for basic income. Um, Ward Smith was wondering, is the MMT concept a factor in UBI works policies? Is that modern monetary theory? Uh, yes, it is not a factor because again, uh, one of our criteria for this work uh, was that these are ideas that have um, already uh, have precedence. They're, they're tax policies that are, are already being done around the world or are incremental change. Uh, MMT is, uh, is unproven and is highly controversial. So we wanted to avoid things like that. Um, now, again, if, if you promote this plan, it doesn't mean that a party couldn't run that believes in MMT and pay for it that way. Um, so we, we don't have any specific opposition to any idea. We're just showing a collection of ideas that solve, answer the question, uh, who should pay and not the vast majority of, of working people. Um, I see a question in the chat from Jason Michelin, um, who I believe said he was uh, coming in from Labrador, Newfoundland and Labrador today. Um, he said, lest we forget that climate change demands a system change. Um, do you think that um, a UBI would work under our current capitalist system or would it be a shift away from capitalism? Um, I think basic income is very compatible with a market economy. Uh, money moves markets. Putting money in people's hands means more spending, which increases better price signals for businesses to invest in the right places. That's why uh, basic income has support from both the left and the right. Um, uh, in, in fact, some, some might even think it's a conservative idea. It's very, very interesting, actually. People with left-leaning views uh, are often afraid that basic income could replace public services and uh, their skepticism that this is a right-wing conspiracy. And then people with right-leaning views are, are worried that basic income will is, is, is socialist or could uh, reduce incentive to work. Uh, and, uh, and they think it's a left-wing conspiracy. So it really depends on your, your view. I, basic income has been championed by uh, liberals, conservatives, um, by people in the NDP for decades. Um, a thousand economists in, in 1968 signed a letter urging the American government to implement a basic income. And we, we, it was all, almost implemented under a Republican administration. So it is, um, uh, it is, I think it's a centrist idea that appeals to, to uh, the, the needs of all people and is very compatible uh, within a, a market uh, economic system. Awesome. At the end of the day, uh, millions of people with a bit more money can, will inform better investment decisions than a few people in a boardroom. So I think basic income is very compatible with a market economy. Terrific. I don't see anything else. I do see one hand up. So I'm just trying to find out who's there with their hand up. Um, if you do have a question, again, please make sure that you're putting it in the chat because it is kind of hard to see whose hands are up in the um, in there. Um, all right, I don't have any open questions right now. So I think that we can wrap things up, Floyd. Okay, thank you everyone for coming. I know it um, uh, can be a lot to hear about tax policy for 45 minutes on a Monday night. <laughs> but uh, again, this is, um, we're just trying to make sure that you have a link that you can share when you're debating people um, on, on social media or sharing with your friends or sharing it with your MP. You can now link them to ubiworks.ca slash how to pay to prove that you, know, you won't have to pay for basic income. That this is credible, it's realistic, it could win in an election. Um, and again, the plan that we propose is, is not the best plan. It, it's, it's the most discussed plan. So uh, it, it's a starting point. Um, and uh, so that's why we did this work, to answer the, the top thing that could prevent this country from getting a basic income, which is, is uh, people not wanting their taxes raised. So that's why we did this work. So please help promote it and continue following us. And um, if you're able to, you, you can donate at ubiworks.ca. It will help very much. And um, thank you very much. Have a great evening. Yes, and I do see someone asked if there will be a recording. Yes, we are recording this meeting and it will be posted on YouTube tomorrow. But thank you, Floyd, so much for, uh, for all of that. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Great questions.